Get your viewers ready. Ready, Kara? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm Kara, and today I'll be talking about the status of social fraternities and sororities on college campuses. And this is kind of a controversial topic today. I'm sure a lot of you have pretty um, strong opinions on whether or not these fraternities should be allowed on campuses. And today I'll be using a lot of statistics because one of the main problems with this argument is that it can come across as a judgment of certain groups of people. So I'll be talking about why social fraternities and sororities either shouldn't be allowed on college campuses or there should be a lot stronger policies for them. And I'll start off by talking about a brief history of Greek life followed by the overall Greek culture. I'll then talk about hazing, which Jake talked about in his presentation last week and then Greek philanthropy. So just as a brief history of uh, Greek life, they began as literary societies in the late 18th century. So they were academic, but World War I and World War II actually put a hold to the Greek movement because soldiers needed the houses for training or as a place to stay. So as American higher education became more democratic, uh, Greek uh, Greeks became more discriminatory. It, there were certain rituals and traditions that came about when you're pledging. And this then led to fraternities of different cultures. Sororities started um, forming for women. There are fraternities for Jewish people, for African Americans, etc. So this leads me to the Greek culture, which again changed over the years as traditions started to develop. So a recent study in 2001 by Harvard uh, asked people in fraternities and sororities how much or if they've binge, they binge drink and then they asked the rest of the student population if they binge drink. So for fraternities, 75.1% of men in fraternities have reported binge drinking and only 48.6% of men not in fraternities reported binge drinking. For women, that's 62.4% versus 40.9%. So as you can see, there's a huge difference between the people that binge drink in Greek life and not in Greek life. Uh, $2.1 million in damage is reported by frat house fires every single year. And the picture above is one of the frat houses at one of the North Carolina state schools. And the police report just said that they were smoking substances. They weren't very clear about that. Sorority girls are also more likely to get an eating disorder. Girls in sororities um, by the New York Times are reported to have a 15% chance of getting an eating disorder, and the rest of girls on college campuses only have a 5% chance of getting an eating disorder. Another negative aspect of Greek culture is that it excludes students who don't have the money to pay for dues, which, which then develops kind of a class system of the privileged and the non-privileged. And this isn't as prevalent here, but as you get further south, it's really obvious who is in a fraternity or sorority. They dress a certain way. In some cases, they'll only date certain people or be friends with certain people. And this is against kind of the college atmosphere of accepting people and equality. Greek culture also encourages conforming to group demands. There are different rituals. There are parties that you have to attend, things that you have to do. And this too is against kind of the college atmosphere of being independent and finding who you are and being an individual. So I found this quote. Uh, Thomas Hedges is a reporter for the Colgate University school newspaper. And he says, I have never ordered my friends to be my chauffeur. I have never ordered them to binge drink. I have never insulted my friends at the dinner table and then forced them to leave. I have never made them line up in my basement so that I can spit in their faces and call them names. And I think this kind of brings to light exactly how cruel Greek culture can be. It, they kind of claim that they're about you know, meeting new people, but this really isn't what friendship is, and I think this is a really negative aspect of Greek life. So next we'll talk about hazing, which Jake talked about in his presentation. So I'll give kind of a brief overview. Since 1970, there has been at least one hazing-related death on a college campus every single year. This was done by a study up at UConn. And 73% of people in Greek life has, have experienced hazing. This is the largest organization, or the largest number of people within an organization that have experienced hazing. And it is 
The second most is Division I athletics. So as you can see, even though campuses do have strict no hazing policies, it clearly goes on. Uh, you can see here an example of hazing. So some more examples of hazing. Circling imperfections. Some sorority girls were, will have pledges get in their underwear and they'll take a Sharpie marker and circle imperfections. If they're a little fat somewhere, maybe they'll circle that. And the pledge's job is to fix the imperfection. And even more humiliating, sometimes the sisters will have frat boys come over and actually circle the imperfections on the girls. Forcing someone to perform such sexual acts, that's pretty self-explanatory. And then at Arizona State, uh, Pledge Brothers had to drink a gallon of milk within an hour, and they were over a bridge overlooking a highway, and they actually threw up all over the highway below them and caused a car crash. And luckily no one was killed, um, but it just shows that hazing really can affect people other than just the pledges being hazed. So, Greeks pride themselves in philanthropy, which is basically just community service, but it's often just done for fun. There are rallies and things like that, and most people don't pledge to be for the community service. You can get involved in community service in other ways. Also, when you consider the damages made, for example, 2.1 million in fires alone, that really doesn't compare to the money that they raise for society. And then, in addition, instead of rallying to raise money, I think it would be more beneficial to actually visit a hospital and help children or actually get involved in society, which you can do in ways other than just Greek life. So, in conclusion, the cons outweigh the pros, and a lot of the culture of Greek life goes against the college motto and what uh, colleges encourage in students. It also doesn't really give a good idea of friendship or leadership or uh, community service for students after they leave college. So I, I believe that social fraternities and sororities should not be allowed on college campuses or there should be a lot uh, stronger enforcement for some of the things that go on. So thank you very much. Again, yeah, 7.25, that's really <laughs> We're all clocking in like at exactly the same time. Am I up next?